Then another question, and this is actually interesting because the interfaith community, which is a good effort, you know, the interfaith uh, uh, efforts that have been made across the country uh, are efforts where people of different faith traditions can get together and talk about common ground. They can talk about what we have in common. Look, we all were all against child abuse, abuse. We're all against women's abuse. We're all against, you know, uh, alcohol abuse, ex drug abuse, etc., etc. We can take common ground and stand on a common platform on many issues with the Christian, with the Jewish, even with the Hindu community, on many issues, on many civil rights issues, human rights issues, justice issues, social justice issues. There's no harm in doing that. But when it goes a little further, because you, you want to get everybody to feel, you know, kind of close to everybody else, and you know one of the things that happens in religion is, of course, you and I believe that the way to salvation, the way to success in the Akhirah is in the deen and Allah al-Islam that the religion is acceptable to Allah is Islam. That's, that's what you and I believe. And the Christian believes you're not going to heaven unless you go through Christ. So even though we're sitting on a table together talking about feeding the homeless, this is something good we're doing now, but he's at his, in his core beliefs, he believes until I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I am not making my way to heaven. And I, in my core, in my heart of hearts, believe I am really worried about you as my Christian friend because when you say ittakhadha ar-Rahmanu waladan, there is a very, very serious problem that you will have to face on Judgment Day. I worry about that for you. He worries about that for me, actually. So we're not on the same page on Judgment Day. In this dunya, we can work together, but and when it comes to the beliefs in the Akhirah, we're definitely not on the same page. Actually, if you if you have any experience doing like Islam 101 or introduction to Islam kind of programs to non-Muslims. The, one of the most common questions they will ask you is, why do you Muslims believe we're all going to hell? Why do you all believe that? Why do you all believe we're going to hell? And, you know, my response to that is more elaborate. Like, why do you think that's the first thing we want you to know? Or which prophet ever preached that first? You guys are all going to hell. <laughs> which prophet ever did that? And let's go a little step further. Do you believe I'm going to hell if I don't accept your faith? Well, this difficulty arose in the modern world because... These religious communities are trying to work with each other. So they came up with this concept. And this concept was, well, we're all just children of God. Of course, the children of God thing is blasphemous to a Muslim when they hear it. But you have to understand, they're not literally talking about children. They're saying we're all, let's put it in Islamic terms, let's flavor it Islamically, we're all beloved creations of Allah. Okay? So, we, you know, Allah loves all of us, and Allah, you know, He created us, and look at the mercies He showered upon us, etc., etc., etc. That's all great. That's all great. And then the other, you know, the step past that comes along. It's very subtle. The step past that is, let's, even when we talk about our faith, we should talk about things that bring us together, things that we have in common with each other. Let's talk about God's mercy, and God's wisdom and God's creative power, and God's grand plan, etc, etc. These are things that, if I talk to a Christian, he won't even disagree with me. about. If I talk about God's mercy, I'm like, yeah, I believe God's merciful too. If I talk about God's love, Allah's love, and you know, God's love, they're not going to disagree. It's going to be on the same footing. Then you know what, what idea comes? Well, these religious figures, Muhammad for you, we say, sallallahu alayhi wa they don't. Jesus for me, Moses for them, you know, these figures, we call them prophets and messengers, they're the ones that actually make us different. If you take them out of the equation, all we have left is God and we're all one big happy family. So let's talk about God and let's not talk about these figures that make us different. And even if you bring them up, let's talk about the Muslims in particular. Even if Muslims, you want to talk about the Prophet wasallam, talk about how he was a great father. Talk about how he was a great leader, how he was a wonderful friend, how he was super honest, and he was super courteous and kind. Will anybody hearing about these qualities of the Prophet ﷺ disagree with them? No. But you know what conveniently we don't bring up? The one thing he wants us to bring up. The Prophet ﷺ did not go on a campaign to tell people that he's honest. That was already the case. It was already known. He didn't go on a campaign to prove to people that he's a good father. He didn't. The first and the, the campaign of the Messenger وسلم, is accept him not as a good guy, not as a nice person, not as a just person, not as a model citizen, not as a wonderful friend, but as what? As a messenger. 
the heart of the problem, there are people in Mecca who believe in God, who believe in Allah. There are even people that don't do shirk and believe in Allah. But that's not enough, Allah says. La ilaha illallah is not enough. You have to have Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to believe in this revelation.